Hi, welcome to the seventh chapter, Settlement, Transport and Communication. I apologize for producing this video so late. I've been a little busy lately. In case most of you want to know what is that, I have been writing articles for a few newspapers. It takes good amount of time there as well because many newspaper editors want fresh perspective and it's really difficult to find a fresh perspective in terms of textual matter. Anyways, I hope you like this video. Let's begin. So we are going to cover topics in a step-by-step -step manner. Here is a brief synopsis of what we are going to cover in this chapter. Let's begin with the first topic. Settlements are places where people build their homes, how you and I have. Now let me tell you a quick story about how human settlement began. Just stick along and it'll be interesting. Earlier human beings lived on trees and in caves. We are talking about early men. Then later on when they started to grow crops, it became necessary to have a permanent home. Because it doesn't make sense coming from far away to grow crops in some lonely far away land. Hence they needed a house next to the land. Call them whatever you want to, but they were smart to build home near the river valleys as water was available and land was fertile. And then much later on with the development of trade, commerce and manufacturing, human settlements became larger. Settlement flourished and civilizations developed. Today's town and cities are the end result of early men's thoughtfulness of residing next to rivers. Settlements are of two types, permanent or temporary. Any type of settlement which is of short term or short time is called temporary settlement. The people who live in deep forests, hot and cold deserts and mountains often have such temporary settlement. One good example of people who fall in temporary settlements are nomads. So these people practice hunting, gathering, shifting cultivation and transhumance. The meaning of transhumance is moving from one place to another depending on the climatic season. For example, the tribes who live in the mountainous region of Himalaya. During winter, they move to the plains area where there isn't much cold. And then during summer, they go back to the mountainous region where it's cold. On the other hand, those settlements where people build homes to live in is called permanent settlement. Today, there are more permanent settlements than temporary settlements. In today's time, we have two different pictures of settlements. One is the rural and one is the urban. Villages fall under rural settlement where people are engaged in activities like agriculture, fishing, forestry, craftswork and trading. They are usually compact, small and scattered, spread across various places. Rural settlement is mostly found in hilly areas, thick forest and regions of extreme climate. Because if you see, these areas have natural vegetation cover, intact and also rich in natural resources. Since most of the rural people are engaged in primary activities and primary activity itself is associated with natural resources that are available naturally, hence making these places an ideal place to stay. On the other hand, urban settlements refer to towns and cities. In urban areas, the people are engaged in manufacturing, trading and services. And the ideal places for urban settlement is usually areas of hot climate. And that's why you see the houses in an urban settlement is made out of bricks and stones, mud, clay, etc. So this was a brief differentiation between urban and rural settlement. Now that we know how settlement happened, let's try to understand how the connection between these settlements occur. Let's try to understand what transport means. Transport is the means by which people and goods move. If you see in the early days, it took a great deal of time to travel long distances. People had to walk and used animals to carry their goods. One of the greatest invention that made transport easier was the invention of the wheel. Now today we have aeroplanes that have made travel faster. Modern means of transport thus saves time and energy. So the four major means of transport are roadways, railways, waterways and airways. Let's understand about each one of them. The most commonly used means of transport especially for short distances are roads. Now roads are of two types, metalled and non-metalled. The metalled road is also called Pakka road and unmetalled road is called Kacha road. So if you look at the road map of India, we have a dense network of roads. Roads have always been built in terrains like deserts, forests and even high mountains. We also have roads underground in subways and underpath. And then we have flyovers which are built over raised structures. So this was all about roadways. Coming to the next transport, railways. The railways are basically for carrying heavy goods and people over long distances quickly and cheaply. The rail transport developed because of the invention of steam engine and the industrial revolution. Diesel and electric engines have largely replaced the steam engines. Now we have super fast trains to make the journey faster. Again, the rail network is well developed over plain areas. But we also have railway lines in difficult mountain terrains. But they are very less in number. Indian railway network is well developed. It is the largest in Asia. So if you look at this map, 
It is the longest railway system connecting St. Petersburg in Western Russia to Vladivostok on the Pacific coast. The third mode of transport is waterways. Waterways are the cheapest for carrying heavy and bulky goods for over long distance. So they are mainly of two types, inland waterways and sea routes. The rivers and lakes that can be navigated are used as inland waterways. Some of the important inland waterways are Ganga Brahmaputra river system, the Great Lakes in North America and the River Nile in Africa. Now sea routes and oceanic routes are mostly used for transporting heavy goods from one country to another. Some of the important ports of the world are Singapore, Mumbai in Asia, New York, Los Angeles in North America, Rio de Janeiro in South America, Durban and Cape Town in Africa, Sydney in Australia, London and Rotterdam in Europe. Coming to the last mode of transport, airways. It is the fastest way of transport developed in the early 20th century. Now it is also the most expensive due to high cost of fuels. It is the only mode of transport to reach the most remote and distant areas, especially where there are no roads and railways. Helicopters are used in the time of calamities for rescuing people and distributing food, water, clothes and medicines. And some of the important airports are Delhi, Mumbai, New York, London, Paris, Frankfurt and Cairo. Coming to the last part of this chapter, communication. It is the process of conveying messages to others. With the development of technology, now we have faster mode of communication. Newspaper, radio and television comes under mass media because it has the potential of covering large number of people. Satellites have made communication even faster. Satellites have helped in oil exploration, survey of forest, underground water, mineral, wealth, weather forecast and disaster warning. Internet has also played a crucial role. Now we can send electronic mails or emails through internet. You can also have wireless communication through your cellular phones. Internet not only provides us with worldwide information, it also helps us in interacting. Oh, by the way, you're watching this video and I'm showing it to you. This is also because of this. This is a fine example what internet means to us. This brings us to the end of this chapter. I hope you gained some info. If you enjoy these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.